Hey folks, Matt Easton here and... Lucy Easton. You're with the Eastons for um, an unboxing. I don't think I've ever done an unboxing with Lucy before, but I have a massive um, box here. Uh, it is not full of golf clubs. That's the first um, surprise. So it should have 16 assorted... and 16? 16 assorted... Um, antique swords and, and, and knives not basically. Not 16 swords because they would not fit in that box. I could fit 16 swords in there but no it's not 16 That's swords for a future video. but it is 16 edged weapons. I think they're all edged anyway we're gonna see. Uh, cookery. I'm not gonna tell you, you wait and see. Um, so Lucy doesn't know what's in my box. Um, you so actually won't tell me it's Really unreasonable. Well, it's partly because I can't remember. <laughs> I've actually been buying a lot of stock uh, recently and also things for myself as well. So I'm not 100% sure, or rather, I, I am on paper. I do have records, of course, uh, but I can't necessarily <laughs> remember. Yeah, I, 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 but I can't necessarily remember everything that's uh, in this box. Are they selling things? Uh, yes, they're all for selling. <laughs> that wasn't the if there are cookeries, I wanted to know. They're, they they're never all selling things, Lucy. <laughs> no, I, the, basically, I don't know. So, uh, as you guys know, I, I buy a lot of stuff, I sell a lot of stuff, and I keep a lot of stuff as well. But I, I'm trying to keep less. In fact, I do keep less, and actually, I've been liberating things from my own collection as well um, over the last year. So. I'm trying to scale it back slightly um, because you get to a certain point. There is, some people say, can you have too many swords? We believe no. No, no, I believe yes. What? I finally got <gasps> to the point. <laughs> have I not told you this? Maybe I've just given away, oh, I've given away <laughs> my shit, secret. Really? Yeah, yeah. So, um, Hang on, what, so we'll put this on. No, Let's I think I realised this. No, no, I, I realised this you about... You have too many swords. I realised this about a year ago, that it gets to a point a where you... A year? Yeah, I've been sitting on it for that long. Um, <laughs> the swords. Yeah. Because they're everywhere. It gets to a point where you've got so many that... And if you're kind of, like I say, when you're just a collector... And then I might have to leave. This so, is <laughs> just a total bomb. And on that topic... Um, apparently there were some rumours on the internet that we'd divorced. They were now, greatly exaggerated. I don't know whether to take this as a huge personal compliment that people are trying to find out if I'm, uh, if I'm available <laughs> or if Luce is available. Maybe it's a compliment. I don't know. But as far as I'm aware, we didn't divorce. To, to the best of my knowledge, we remained together. But we did do two big things since the last time. <laughs> well, we did many big <laughs> things, but we did two uh, sort of life-changing things since Lucy was last on video. Number one, we had a second child, for those of you who don't know. So we have a four-month-old little boy at the moment. And um, we bought a new sofa. No, we actually bought a new house as well. So We did also buy a new sofa. <laughs> we bought a new sofa Three to go in the new house. big life events. So we moved and we had another child. So that's one of the reasons that I haven't, uh, for a certain amount of time anyway, I wasn't doing so many videos for anyone who doesn't know. But on to the topic of this video, which is an unboxing. Now, and also that you think you can have too many swords. Uh, yeah, so I just realised that at a certain point you have so many swords and you lock them away and you don't look at them, so what's the point of having them? Well... So, yeah, so there's, I, think there's there a, I think there's a critical mass for swords. Of How a, many is the critical mass? Probably about 120. You've got some selling to do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have more than 120 swords. Uh, Lucy's counted them, so she knows I do. Right, so um, this is a big golf box full of assorted edge weapons. <laughs> that's the, that's the first thing. I haven't done an unboxing video for ages, so I thought I would do one. I haven't had Lucy on video for ages, so I thought I'd do one. <laughs> I thought I'd uh, do an unboxing video with her um, on it. And, um, and, and, and yeah, and that's it. So you're going to share this. Get on if, with it. Yeah, there's, so that's it really. This is just a simple unboxing video. I can't remember everything that's in here. We might talk about some of the things as we go along. So I'm going to um, stop the video and uh, obviously uh, you'll be back here in a split second because <laughs> I'll edit this together. But I'm going to um, get this box open and we'll start looking at what's inside. Oh, and also before I go on... Do they not get to watch you opening a box? No. Great answer. I have done those videos where I literally put everything on and they're just too boring for life. Um, so, and there's a lot of objects to get through in here. Also, I want to say I've been accused in some of my previous videos with Lucy um, where people say, let the goddamn lady speak, um, because apparently I talk over you too much. So I'm going to let you talk a lot more on this video, yeah. which I'm sure you're... I'm sure that'll end really I'm well. sure you're so happy about that. <laughs> right, okay, let's get this box open and see what's inside. Right, so I've got the uh, box open with my trusty little uh, boker and... Um, 
what we decided while we were just um, off camera for a minute there was that as I take these things out, uh, we can do a test Lucy. <laughs> so we'll see how many of these things she can roughly describe, how correct she is. And you can play along at home, guys. You can play along really at home. That, that wasn't quite the conversation that we had while the camera was. <laughs> but I'll give it a go. It was the conversation in my if brain. all to us, we're in. It, it was, anyway, um, you can play along at home as I bring the thing out. See if you know what the thing is before I say what it is. But here's the wild card, folks. I don't necessarily know what all of these things are. Okay, right. Okay. Or do I? Da, da, da. <laughs> right. Oh, God, that is heavy, that box. So, here's the first thing. Um, I think there's more than one thing in there. I think this is a book. It's... Go on, really you guess. Um, we, could, gonna, we could have done. We could have done everything past the parcel that with this. Feasibly have a cookery in it. You always think everything's a cookery. No, but they're Right. Come on. It's definitely something sharp. I genuinely don't know. What is it? What is it? <laughs> so, before you answer, let okay. the let the people at home see if they can answer. I'm what sorry, is <laughs> that? There we go, and move it close to the camera. So we've we've started on a really, really strong What is point that? Here. It's it's too small for your hand, I'll have to have <laughs> No my hand actually fits in it for once. <laughs> this is a Qatar. Oh, it's too, it's too big for your hand. It's too and big it's for your too hand. big for my hand. It is literally the we've... answer the answer to your question is able to answer for the first one. It, it is a ninja punch dagger. <laughs> <laughs> and where are they from? Do you know where they're from? India? <sighs> yes. So all Why over India. Why that noise if I was right? Because you gave it away for the people at home. They might have not have known. asking me. I'm the only one here. I'm so, talking to a guinea pig or a cat. There are cats and guinea pigs here, in case you're wondering what on earth Lucy's talking about <laughs> at this one. So there we go. That's a, that's a rather nice Qatar. Um, relatively simple. Um, Dance. Relatively simple um, construction, but the blade's very nice. It's got some detailing in the grooves there and quite a thick um, reinforced point. I'm much more excited about this box for not the stabbing really through really armour and stuff. Hand. Right. But Will that be the only Qatar? We oh. don't know. Yeah, no, that's too big for my hand. You can start. it. You can play the Qatar. Guitar. No, that's guitar you can play. Not right. Very well. <laughs> oh. Another knife. Another knife, or just one knife, or two knife, knife, knives. <laughs> Nicey. Knives, knives, Not knives. Nice. Right. Ooh. Ooh. There we go. Okay. At I this like, point, I'm going with Rondel Dagger. I do like it when uh, couriers use an original 15th century one. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> Imagine if I was just in with the box of things. You can buy them. For those of you who are not aware, you you I literally. It depends on the condition and, and the well, quality like of it. No, 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 oh, though, no, no. Is not that ah, right. So ah. hold on, hold on. So the viewers see first. But you can oh. your your brain your oh God, your I'm your brain can be guessing whilst. Oh fuck! That's oh. <laughs> are we not allowed to? You're on TV. On? No, you are. But, oh. Right. Um, so. Don't say yet. Okay. So I'm showing the. People at home, there we go. And I will take it out of here. Da, 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 da. There we go. So, what might this be? I, uh, it's on the tip of my brain. On the tip of your brain? Does your brain have a tip? Does yours not? <laughs> it's in my brain. Do you want to hold it? I do. Um, <laughs> this is a nice example, actually. This is nicer than the example. I own. Oh, this is so annoying. So, well, if I wasn't being watched, I'm sorry, tell me the first letter. P. <laughs> I say P because we have a six-year-old. <laughs> P. <laughs> That's how we say letters to six-year-olds. A uh, B I, K. I, I, unfortunately, I can't remember. It's called a pesh cabs. Okay. okay. I didn't know that. Where do you the think the word I was searching for was a different word? Was it a rude word? <laughs> where's it? <laughs> where's it from? I don't know. Roughly? Turkey. In a way, that's actually not too bad. And you can find forms of peshkabs or related things, yatagans, in... Yatagans! 
Turkey. Turkey. That's the oh, one you're thinking of the wrong. So, so actually, the construction of the hilts on these, again, the there? construction of the hilt is almost identical. Okay, so they are related weapons, and they have a T section uh, to right. the back of the blade. So I'll just show you guys. So this construction of the hilt there, and the way it's built up with plates, and these kind of ears at the back, and this ferrule here, the way that that's constructed, and then the blade has a T section, so it's got this rib running along the back to make it very rigid. That is uh, common with the Turkish yatagan. So they are related weapons, but the peshkabs, certainly this form of peshkabs, is famously from... Afghanistan. Okay. And you do find them, uh, they overlap slightly into Persia on one side and slightly into India on the other side. There are Indian forms of peshkabs and there are Persian forms of peshkabs. Iran. Uh, what's now Iran, yeah, well, what was the Persian Empire and Turkey was the Ottoman Empire, of course. Um, so, yeah, so few countries are in isolation and usually if you have a, a style of dagger or sword or whatever from a place you will find it bleeds over into neighboring areas and they might have a weapon which is related to uh, to it so in this case this is a nice afghan um peshkabs and i should mention uh, that it peshkabs. is peshkabs yeah and it's 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 an anti-armor dagger basically they they're designed to, uh, to for penetration um but particularly of um of mail, uh, chainmail armour. Uh, I should also mention these grip um, elements are very clearly made of um, elephant ivory. Um, so there we go, elephant ivory is a common material on uh, old, old like weapons. Really? Oh. Like. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but sometimes they use walrus ivory, sometimes even mammoth ivory if it comes from um, Russia or you know, areas like Siberia and stuff where mammoths come out of uh, the, um, the ice. Right. So, on to the next one. I personally don't have any issues with antique ivory at all. Um, there we go. There could be a whole video on my feelings about that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so I accept, we won't, we won't I accept people have different views on that, but you know, antique ivory, it's antique. Happened a long time ago, and we use animals for all sorts of products. And elephants are an animal. There we go. It's a shame that so many of them were killed. <laughs> right. Maybe we're stick the like stick the knife the there. Right, let's see what this will be. So, any ideas? Yet? Yatagan. Oh, I forgot. We haven't had a yatagan yet. <laughs> Another pesh cab. How? How? Okay. Right. Oh no, it's not. Right. So it Blimey. it is. There we go. Let's have a look at this blade. Oh. Yes, there's one here. See, I recognise the blade shape, but not the, the hilt shape. So it, you were actually correct. It is, um, it is a form of, um, it is a form of pesh cabs, but it's, it's a different style. Um, and it, that, this though. is also, this is also a more recent manufacture. It's got a, a horn grip. Let's bring it closer to the camera for you. It's got a horn grip, a T-backed blade. It has. A pattern in the steel, I believe it's, it could be Woots, but I think it's pattern welded. It has inlay, I don't know if you'll be able to see in the light, but it has inlay on that side, brass inlay. A butt cap, so to speak, and um, a, a sort of peshkab style scabbard. This is probably a 20th century manufacture for the tourist market, I would say, although conceivably it could be late 19th century. I don't know, I'll have, to, I'll have to study that one a little bit more, but I think it's fairly modern. Um, and uh, yeah, it is basically a peshkab, but a different style. This style is found more in India, um, whereas obviously the other one is quite typically Afghan. This is more of, a, a, more of an Indian um, style, or could even be Persian as well. Um, although this is probably made in Afghanistan in a foreign style, or for the foreign market. Let's have a look and see what's next. Right, I've whipped out a big one now. Um, so this is obviously a sword. Sword sized. Doesn't mean it's a sword. Could be a mace. Could be a gun. That's a bit long for a mace. Could, well, depends on the mace. You get long maces. Not that. Oh, it's two things. Da da da. So da, da, da. let's pick one of these first. Let's have a look here. So. Um, I really appreciate when people use packing that can be reused, um, and I do reuse it, um, be it uh, cardboard or bubble wrap or whatever. 
I hate, as you know, packing peanuts, those polystyrene things. They go everywhere. They're horrible to throw away. You can't recycle them. Right. So here we have a kind of sword. Stick the knife there. Ooh, look at that. That is a nice blade, isn't it? The hilt is a little bit rougher. So, who can say what that is? Let's have a bring it up to the camera for you. There we go. So, who out there knows what this is? So, what do you think it is, Lucy? That's how this game goes, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Um, Straight blade, nice. I, so don't, it, I don't know. So, it's, I hope you'd be able to see it's got uh, two main fillers and then a bunch of little fillers at the back here. The blade is probably older than the hilt. The hilt could be a later, although obviously still period, uh, replacement. Quite tight in the grip. So, you will know if you watched a recent video where I did a uh, video about uh, killiches and shamshirs. And shamshir. this indeed, you could call a shamshir. Um, I would probably personally call it a safe, um, a safe, safe, safe. I'm never really sure how to pronounce that properly, but that's the Arabic word for sword. <laughs> um, but this is, um, I believe, um, a, a safe from... Uh, that's not the same as a shamshir. <laughs> That's difficult to say. So sham, shamshir is a Persian word. Mm -hmm. uh, kilich is a tur Turkish word and safe is an Arabic word. Okay. I think I've got that correct, folks. Um, and fundamentally, they're all described, they, the words all just mean sword. Um, okay. So technically in the... In, so, oh, hang on, so if I've said sword... You would have been correct. It is definitely a sword. For those of you who said sword, <laughs> you can mark down that you got one point. Um, but... Uh, this is from, I would say, from an Arabic country, and I would call it a safe. I think it is not Persian. It is not Indo-Persian. It is from an Arabic country, I believe. I wouldn't know which one. Um, I'll do a little bit of research and see if I can narrow that down on some of the style of the uh, hilt and stuff. I might do a video just about this, actually, in its own right. Just move the knife out of the way. Um, but there's something very characteristic about these swords in the way that the uh, hilt is attached. And you'll notice that so you've got two grip plates and essentially a back strap that goes around a uh, pommel cap. But they characteristically usually have wire bound around here. Uh, threaded around here over the bottom langette of the cross guard and that is a very uh, characteristic feature of them right let's put that down and have a look for the next thing okay so next up what do you think this is going to be lucy uh, i'm gonna go with another sword it does look like it doesn't it i think oh da, da, da. okay are we ready Unleash. Right. so i i know which one this is um is it an exciting one well, I'll let you be the judge of that okay. when you tell everyone watching what it is, but wait for a second. There we go. Right. So what is this? Let's have a little close up look at it. So a brass hilt with a straight rear quillon with a sort of acornish shape and a fullered blade of around, by looking at it, I would imagine it's about... Um, 28 inches, something like that. So that's thrown me because I, would, I had assumed that everything was going to be like the same type of stuff. Non-European? Yeah. No, no, not at all. Okay, so I think, and you're, uh, you know, I appreciate that I'm probably wrong, but that looks French to me. So I'm going to go with it being French. So a lot of people would call this a briquet, um, which is indeed French. Now this might be a French one, I can't see any writing on the spine of the blade, which often denotes, yep. Yeah. Uh, oh, hold on. Uh, no, I can't see any regimental or other maker's markings or anything like that. I suspect that this particular example is Dutch or B Belgian. Um, but oh, well, I was not a totally wrong region. No, no, but the, the basic, the fundamental style of it is French. French yeah. So Lucy was correct. Did you get that right? Uh, so it's basically based on a French briquet. Yeah, so um, there we go. It's, it's a form of briquet. It's European, obviously, um, 
and but I'm not exactly sure where the the briquet, the French briquet, was copied by a lot of different countries. It was copied by the Russians, copied by the Belgians and the Dutch. Um, I think some of the Italian states copied it as well. So yeah, so a very popular style of sword characterized by a saber blade, basically, usually a short-ish saber blade. They vary from, from sort of uh, about 20 inches up to almost 30 inches. Did and you then, have one of those in the garden room? Um, no. Um, so, um, and they have a cast brass hilt. Um, so. Yes, there you go. That's they're, they're very robust things, meant to be as much a weapon as a tool, I think. And they were often used um, for things, not just for fighting, they were often used for chopping things up and all this kind of stuff. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the next okay, item. I've got another long object coming out here. Ooh. Right, so that's the length of that one. Any clues so far? Nice to have all these tubes, I'll reuse those. Oh, there we go. So this one looks, oh, there's something else in there as well, so I'll put that down. Um, Imagine if there was a secret surprise in the other tube. So this one's going to be quite easy for Lucy. Don't tell them yet. Let's see if you guys can guess. So I'm going to move a little bit closer for this as I do this. So let's start tearing the bubble wrap off. And you'll get a clue quite early on in this process. There we go. I guess lots of you now know what that is. Tulwa. Tulwa, yeah, so an Indian Tulwa. Um, Tulwa, Talwa, um, lots of people say, oh, it's definitely said Tulwa, or so lots of people say it's definitely said Talwa. It depends basically where in India uh, you are. Um, and um, yes, the word Pulwa is the same. Um, and that's the word uh, Pulwa is just simply the, uh, the uh, Pashtun or um, Afghan uh, name for it. And what does it mean? Much like Shamshir, Kilich and everything else, it means sword. <laughs> so. Uh, 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 uh. Right, ooh, ah. Ooh. So there's an interesting detail on this uh, cross guard I'll show you in a minute. So this style of cross guard is um, often associated, I believe, with, um, with uh, Muslim or Islamic areas. But you'll notice that there is a notch in, I'm <laughs> trying to get to focus on the sword instead of Lucy. There we go. There you'll notice it has a notch there. And the reason for that is originally there would have been a knuckle bow attached there that came around and butted up to the um, disc there. So there would have been a knuckle bow protecting the front of the knuckles. I have seen these on where they were very clearly deliberately, deliberately removed. Presumably because the person that owned, hold on Lucy, hold on, she loves still was. Um, presumably because the person that owned it uh, or inherited it or whatever found that knuckle bow uh, inconvenient or uncomfortable uh, and so they just removed it or maybe they just didn't like knuckle bows for some reason. Can't fit their hands properly in towards. So lots of modern people have trouble getting their hands into towards. Now I'll, I'll mention a few other things. This is a, looks like a relatively simple blade with a uh, one groove or fuller up the middle. Uh, the so-called um, Indian Rakasso, so they're blunt up until level with the Rakasso. I'll just show that again on camera. So they are blunt up here. You notice it's got Rakasso until where the um, langette stops, and then after that point they're sharpened, because of course you'd have trouble sharpening right the way back here anyway, because the langette would be in the way. Um, but there is an interesting thing, and you won't be able to see it on camera, unfortunately. I'll show Lucy in a minute so she can make the right noises. Um, but there is an armourer's stamp under here, which is really nice. Um, and it's a very intricate one, um, stamped into the blade underneath the Ricasso, and it does suggest that this blade is of decent quality. Um, and when I see one of those marks, I always think, hmm, woods, woods. <laughs> I don't know. I can't see any at the moment. Um, Matt often sees woots when... <laughs> I often see woots where there turns out to be none, unfortunately. But this blade is very dirty and it needs cleaning up. Um, and then maybe I'll do a little test etch on it. It also looks like... Can I actually look at it? Yeah, yeah. It looks like there's some decoration uh, in the hilt as well, which has got oxidisation over the top of it, which needs cleaning off to reveal. Right. Your turn to hold it now. Thanks. Does it fit your hand? It's quite a hefty blade, isn't it? It's loose. 
Is it a bit loose? So, uh, Tull was... <laughs> that was such an anti-climax. <laughs> well, t- Tull was often, unfortunately, they're, they're literally glued into the hilts. The tang is glued in with a type of um, pitch um, uh, glue, essentially. And um, you can heat it up, which re-softens it or re-liquidizes it if you, if you heat it, it too much. It can Yeah, it can go wrong. It can bubble out. Um, but you can heat it up, re-solidify it, and make it solid that way. It's nice, though. Um, but uh, unfortunately, with age, often that glue material does sometimes crack out, fall out, shrink, all this kind of stuff. So unfortunately, often towers with age do get loose blades. But people who know how to do it well, and I've done it successfully a few times, but I can't do it reliably. Successfully. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, people people... Uh, are able to solve that problem, and I do know a few people who specialise in indo Persian swords. Don't that can cut with swords probably wouldn't be overly bothered by that, but oh no, no that wouldn't be safe. Wildly. That wouldn't be safe to cut with. No, no, that's yeah. what I'm saying. People who don't cut with swords. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just a normal collector wouldn't be bothered by that. Yeah. So, and absolutely, it's it's only really people like us that wave swords around that are really kind of bothered by that. Uh, the feel, the fact that you can feel it's a little bit loose in hand. But other than that, it's a nice okay. tulwar with a maker's stamp. You can see that maker's stamp on yeah, there. Yeah, that's cool. Really intricate, isn't it? It's really nice. So yeah, nice tulwar. Right. Let's see what the next object is. This is, hid- hidden this is hidden down inside the tube, so I'm not sure what this is going to be. Oh! Right. Unwrap it. I'm doing it. <laughs> this one, I'm just going to hand to Lucy. Actually, no, I'll show it to you guys first, and then I'll hand it to Lucy. It's like a part of the book. It does look like a part of a boat, doesn't it? It's quite an unusual thing, right. Well, that's fascinating. So, what we have here is a uh, wooden scabbard that has quite a sort of homemade look to it, I suppose, with uh, some kind of military webbing, fairly modern webbing that's been added around. And someone has painted some uh, letters um, on it, including a VR uh, Victoria Regina um, crown. I have no idea if that's old. Let's just have a look at the actual object. (laughs) So, what? (laughs) This is an interesting object, isn't it? It's a nice thing. And interestingly, it has... Uh, so I'll bring it up close to the... Uh, so you might be thinking what you would call this. I'll, I'll ask Lucy in a minute. Um, this looks relatively modern, um, but then it does have some markings on it that appear to be military or regimental markings on it. Down here you can probably just about see. There we go. And it's also got some... Indian writing on the back of here. Well, I've just given away partly what. <laughs> um, so, um, it is interestingly not sharpened. It's got the factory produced edge on it. So, um, there we go. <laughs> thoughts? My thoughts are that it looks like someone started to make a knife and then they hammered for too long. And created far too much. A, a, a giant big knife. Yeah. I, I honestly have absolutely no idea, but it's unbelievably light. For, for what it looks like, like it's can, lighter than... Yeah, yeah. it's, 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 it's well this. made. You're it's not well... selling this. <laughs> yes, I am. No. <laughs> well, you can buy it off me then. Oh, we're married. <laughs> it's That's funny how that really works, cool. isn't it? It's a nice thing. It's nice. I don't know what it is. So it's fundamentally um, a yatagam. Okay, in terms of its what? in terms of its shape, that is a yatagam blade. Um, so this is this blade is very similar to what you find on so-called yatagam bayonets. Does the hilt bear no relation to whether something is a yatagam then? No, the I yata- always thought it was that little. Beaky. No, the the, the yatagan um, is the, the is the blade shape. Yeah, so you can get yatagan bayonets. Oh, so something something like the eighteen fifty six Enfield yatagan bayonet for sergeants, 
has a blade very, very similar to this. The hilt of this is built up much like a machete grip and also quite like a kyber knife or, or yatagan. It has a lanyard ring uh, forged into that. So in terms of aging this, let's just ignore the scabbard because we don't know how... Our... There are initials on it that match those on the There board. are, and it's very interesting. So the sca... they different? No, no, they're, they're not. The they're the same. Um, so there are some... Uh, letters and numbers which are painted onto the scabbard which do match the ones that are stamped on so that could be a period uh, <laughs> in terms of how old it is I don't know it could be second world war could be first world war I don't know I think it's definitely second world war well this has got VR on it Victoria well, so who knows yeah so it's a bit of a mystery so I'll need to go away and do a bit of research about this I've never oh, seen yeah. I've never knowingly seen anything exactly like this before but it is good quality Oops. it is well made and do you know one of the things that gives away the fact that this is made by someone who knows how to make blades is this is a full width tang I'll just show you it's a full width tang and can you see how the width of the tang tapers and gets thinner down here and that's something that not many modern makers well that's not totally true some modern makers do it but a lot of modern makers don't necessarily know that that's a thing and when you look at uh, original old examples of forged knives um, as opposed to modern bowie knives for example if you look at historical bowie knives often the tang will get thinner as it goes down which is uh, a good way of reducing weight so you've got the strength at the junction where you need it and then you don't need the thickness of the tang down here so you thin it away and you find that even on swords as well like the 1853 pattern anyway it's an interesting thing isn't it it's very cool nice i need to do some research find out what it is the style of the scabbard may hint at it being from southeast asia or maybe indian army Maybe Chindits, World War II, who knows? It's a bit, a bit, I'm guessing now, it could be post-World II, but then why has that got VR painted on it? Maybe that, maybe the scab is completely, yeah, it. maybe the scab is completely spurious and made up. I just don't know. It's a bit of a mystery. Fun though. Yep, yeah, fun. Let's, like see what, let's see what's next. Not for sale. Ow! Be careful pulling sharp objects out of boxes. One of them just stabbed me in the foot. <laughs> Right, let's see oh, what this is. Whoa. This is some good wrapping, isn't it? Whoa, that is creative. I like that. So, have you got any ideas so far? The shape of it? It's curved. But it's weirdly long if that goes all the way to the end. I think it's two swords wrapped together. Oh, I'm quite um, interested to see this. I think I remember what this is. So, again, let's see if I get to this point. Oh, wow. Ah, uh, you just gave it away from them. They're supposed to be guessing first. But there we go. They all know. So, tool wire sticking out the end there. I think it's. I think Say it's some two, things about what you can see. Two tool wires. Look, a tool wire. No. Oh, because it's kind of engraved on the end of it. So yeah, it's got inlay. Fairly standard. Yes, it is. Loads of yours have that. Or are you the ones that if you have not. Do not roll your eyes. Oh no. Right, so. Oh, oh that's nice. we're almost out. There we go. So, here we go. Da, 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 da. Super curved. Oh, oh, oh. Super curved. Oh, fighting round corners. And this one's not wobbly. Oh, that's nice. So, <laughs> sorry, that was a not. Shouldn't make sounds like that on video. Right. Oh, that's nice. Um. <laughs> So this is a highly curved blade. So most people in the modern world would describe this obviously as a, as a tulwar because of the style of the hilt. But if we look at the style of the blade, the style of the blade is very much that of a shamshir, a Persian blade. And uh, often these Persian blades were imported into India. Some of them were made in India as well. But a lot of blades were imported into India. Ironically, certainly the Wootz blades, the Wootz um, steel itself, um, in ingots or sometimes even finished blades but as often as ingots was exported to Syria and, and parts of Persia and then it was made into blades and then it was imported back into India again and in India the bear blade was fitted with an Indian style hilt could be a, a more of a Mamluk style hilt but in this case it's a traditional Indian style hilt this one has silver inlay in it which should polish up nicely uh, there is a tiny bit of movement in the disc, which you sometimes get. Um, the actual blade is solid in the, um, uh, in the hilt itself. C 
Can you see something there interesting on the blade, Lucy? Tell the viewers. No what, idea? What do you want me to be saying? Can you not see it? Oh, it looks like, like a crest. Yeah, so there's an inlaid design uh, on one side. I doubt you'll be able to see, but there's an inlaid uh, design in one side of the blade here, which, uh, which should polish up a little bit carefully. Probably a sign of quality, um, and there is some homemade, should we say, indented, uh, so done with a, uh, a punch and a hammer, um, writing on this side, which looks like um, Sanskrit um, Indian text to me. I think it's lost um, the very tip. Uh, yes, it has lost the very, very tip there. So it's, it's been jammed into, into something and it's just snapped off, unfortunately. So that could be reshaped slightly to make that a little bit more subtle, but it's a lovely curved blade. Give Lucy a go. That is very nice. Really nice, um, really nice sword. And uh, it needs some cleaning up. Needs a little bit of uh, expert restoration from Ooh. yours truly. But it's, um, that's a nice sword. Very good quality really Tolwa. Lovely. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not top quality, but it's good quality. Um, I noticed in one 19th century uh, British uh, text talking about Tolwa's, uh, of, the, of that time, uh, it described bizarre tilwars, and it didn't mean strange tilwars. Um, it was talking about bizarre quality tilwars. So some, you know, there were just like with all you know, knives, swords, anything. Um, there are kind of economy grade, and then there's one level up from that, two levels up from that, and you get up to you know a medium level one, and then it's kind of a princely or you know a kind of lordly one. So just like with everything, it's the same I've talked about with medieval swords as well. When people talk about their values, it's like talking about the value of a car. How much does a car cost? How much do you want to spend? You know, um, so you can get. You can get one that's old and knackered, or you can get, uh, you know, a really poor quality one, or you can get a, you know, a Bentley or a Rolls Royce the or whatever. The detail on this is really lovely. Yeah, it's a nice, good quality sword. Right, I'll let Lucy keep, I think, I, I think she wants to keep holding that while I get the, uh, the next item out. So let's have a look. We've still got plenty in here. That's so, really nice what's this? <laughs> I think I know what this is. So, um... If you're uh, packing and sending knives and swords, be really uh, careful how you pack them. Uh, most importantly, you want to keep the postal workers safe. Um, so any points or edges should be fully secured, preferably against some wood or something like that. Um, because if a postal worker gets injured because of poor packing, that would be really bad for all of us. So and please, and for the postal worker, but it'd be bad for everyone. That's what I'm saying. So um, please be mindful when you're posting these sorts of things. So some of you will immediately know what this is. Some of you might not have a clue. Um, oh, that's kind of, let's get that off. Do you have any ideas what this is, Lucy? Initially, first glass, it was a telescope. A telescope. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm very now aware that it's not a telescope. That's what I was... Is it broken? No, just one little band come off. So there we go. So we've got... Um, we've got a wooden scabbard with brass um, bands going around it all down. Um, and um, uh, the brass bands hold the two halves of the wooden scabbard together. Very um, characteristic construction style from this part of the world. You do find it in other parts of the world as well. And as Lucy mentioned, it is a bit katana shaped. Uh, that the, is nothing. The grips, no, no, round. very, yeah, it's round and it's got some shark skin. shark skin in the middle with brass fittings up and down. So this isn't particularly old, uh, but it's got some age to it. And it is a... Oh, I've no idea. <laughs> do you guys know? You probably do. Some of you will do. So they actually come from, uh, it's called a DHA, uh, D -H -A. and the DHA, as I've talked about in previous videos, well, this is, you yeah, know, this is, it is relatively short. They're quite a thick blade, as you can see, so quite thick at the, uh, the spine, uh, wedge section, this one with a fuller and a full sedge. Um, and yes, they are a little bit katana shape, 
the blade is a little bit like a Chinese dao but smaller um, and they have grips which are longer than the single hand but they're not usually intended for gripping two-handed that is just purely to give a bit be better balance basically and perhaps be used in certain hooking techniques as well like we'd use a mesa in, in, in Europe um, and the da comes from various areas this is probably a Burmese da it could be from Thailand um, in which case it, I think it would be called a crabby um, as used in crabby krabong um, but yeah basically we I think this is a Burmese dar but you do find them in, in other areas as well um, so there we go it's probably um, it's heftier than it looks that's so light well it, but it's got quite a lot of whack to it hasn't it you can tell oh, it's going to hit with, with yeah can we cut with that no um, why because I want to sell it. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, dars, they're nice swords. So nice. They're sometimes used in pairs, incidentally. We talk about dual wielding occasionally. Um, <laughs> And um, in, crab in, in, in Thailand uh, and in, you know, Krabi Krabong and, and martial arts like this, they do use two, two dars sometimes, one in each hand. Although I have to say that whilst that does have some history to it, it does seem that historically speaking, it was more common for these to be used with a shield. And in more modern martial arts, uh, for whatever reason, probably because it looked cooler, they started doing the two sword thing more, whereas historically they seem to have done sword and shield more. As I've spoken about many times, it does seem that paired swords are often kind of like a fencing school or a showing off thing. And it's great in a duel, works very well in a duel one on one. But if you're fighting on the battlefield, then a shield is a really good thing to have because of people throwing spears or shooting arrows or whatever. A shield's useful for that. Two swords, not so much. Um, right, there we go. So a probably Burmese da could possibly be from a neighbouring country. Um, but that general, uh, that general, I'm trying to stick it in the wrong end of the scale, that general vicinity. Let's see what's next. Right, so amazingly, we're only about halfway through these, so I'm going to try and accelerate. I'm going to try and talk less uh, and, and hammer through these more quickly now. Um, so, it's a sword. what no, have we got here? Knife. It's a sword, it's a knife, yes! <laughs> um, right, um, quick, quick, quick. Oh, that came off quite easily. Huh. Any ideas, people? I, I mean, I know, I know what it is. Well, you would hope. Wouldn't I do. You? Well, I don't always. Sometimes I just make stuff up. <laughs> um, no. You actually don't. So, the, funnily enough, I've had one of these before, and when it came to me, I didn't know what it was. But hence, I do now know what these are. Um, funnily enough, I don't know the proper name for these. Um, it doesn't make my odds of being able to name it strong. <laughs> no. They are from, and you will not guess, they are from Bhutan and Tibet. You don't know, I wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> so uh, they're basically from where the Dalai Lama is from and, yeah, and the neighbouring country, Bhutan. Um, and it is a, a short sword. Now, it has a very... Oh, it's quite stiff. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, it has a short blade, as you can see. It is a short sword. It, funnily enough, it looks almost like a mini... It looks like a gladius. Exactly what I was going to say. It looks a bit like a mini gladius, but they are, as far as I've seen pretty much always um, single-edged. I think maybe occasionally you get blades repurposed from other weapons, but I'm talking too much now. Um, so, but generally speaking, they're single-edged, choppy little things. Give us your thoughts, Lucy. Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool little chopper, isn't it? It would hurt. That'd hurt. That'd have, <laughs> have someone's hurt. eye out with that. There we go. It's, um, so it's a, uh, it's a short sword, essentially. And it's what uh, it's a relatively well-to-do person in somewhere like so Bhutan like or Tibet would have. Well, there we go. And the scabbard, very characteristically, is open on one side. So you make the scabbard is... That troubles me. Yeah, it's open on one side and closed on the other with just a couple of brass bands. Careful of my thumb. <laughs> a couple of brass bands to keep it in there. So it's exposed. Well, Quite cool. Yet, and these box shapes are not looking optimistic. You were the one talking about cook grease. So. I still am. <laughs> You're always talking about cook grease. I mean, we saw a guitar, so. Ooh, Why do you like cook grease so much, Lucy? They're really good to cut with and they fit in your hand really nicely. Yeah. I like cook grease as well. I think basically everyone likes cook grease. I like a teeny tiny knife to get with. Now, what's this? A yet again! Yeah. <laughs> Does it look familiar? <laughs> It. It's the same one. Why do you open this? What? There are two of them. 
There are bizarrely two but of the these things. The reason that I was absolutely sure this was the same is that, that it's got the exact the, same letters. Yeah. And did you know? Those letters must be something regimental, and it's got it's got. Can more we keep both of them? <laughs> no, these are for, <laughs> these are for selling, Lucy. Um, there's ah, there's writing on the back that might tell us something. Right. Do not sell. It says. <laughs> right. Okay. So I'll have to send the. It's it's Indian writing uh, that's been um, put in with a punch uh, and a hammer um, into the spine. Uh, this has also never been sharpened. So they're you know factory produced with that style of. But they're really cool. Are you really going to sell them? Yes. I told you, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to thin down the collection. I can't keep everything. But yeah, they, they are cool things. They're like halfway between... During a, the break, he said he was going to keep one of the tall whilst, so. <laughs> so he is saying that he's going to um, sell everything. It's not true. Yeah, and then but I'll sell another tall while from my collection. It's like one in, one out policy. Okay, well, this nightclub's full. Sell something else. Um, so there we go. Interesting things. Halfway between a yatagan and a machete and some That's type really of cool. yeah mystery though mystery. I have to do some research and if I find out if you can't find anything, something. How do you keep them? Right, so let's see what this might be. Oh, let's get this. A sword. Don't speak. <laughs> no, I didn't mean like that. <laughs> I mean, don't give away what... Oh. Are you quite happy by the things that are coming out of this box, it's aren't really you? Good, isn't it? So I think Lucy gets a bit bored of the typical military sabres and stuff that are turning up here. So, can you guess what that is? That's right. What is it? Tour. Of course, it's another Tawa. I think this is a more basic uh, quality. Probably, you know, what I was saying before about the um, bizarre quality, um, or bizarre... Tool a yeah, I need to resharpen the knife. I use my knife a lot. Oh, that's a very, and very traditional tool. I like that. It is a traditional. That's it's a, really it's nice. a traditional. If you say tool, that's what you. Expect. That's kind of what people think of. Oh, it's got a pretty big blade on it. That's nice. <laughs> oh, you'll like how this feels. That is a that is a pretty big beefy blade, but it's um, quite light. It is not great quality uh, manufacture <laughs> no no it's not roots no boots. it's not roots. <laughs> it's not it's not amazing quality it is as i say bog standard typical fighting tower nice um scabbard for it actually the scabbard's in good condition i feel offended on behalf of standard towers when you're making out like they're not all awesome so yeah, so it's that's a, it, really not. Oh, that's my favourite to hold so far. Yeah, it's actually. So it's funny sometimes, the one that's just <laughs> the kind of. Your head, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I've been hitting the head with swords many a time. Can I just um, point out not by me? No, no, not by Lucy, by other people <laughs> in the club. Um, the, it just goes to show that sometimes oh, something that is lovely. just of bog standard quality actually can feel great and still do the job great. Something doesn't need to be, you know, beautiful pattern welded steel or woots or it doesn't need to have silver inlay in the hilt or whatever to be an effective weapon. And that is just an effective weapon. I just want to show the guys one um, thing about this. This is quite unusual uh, for Talwas. Not, not like mega unusual, but a little bit unusual. You will notice... Most towers, the disc is close to 90 degrees in relation to the orientation of the grip, but this one is tilted that way. Now that uh, tilt actually makes that somewhat more comfortable and easier for people to use if they're used to using other types of sword. If they're not used to towers and you have that tilt it means that you can extend the sword out like that and it doesn't dig into your hand and wrist that's pain. Why it's so much. That's why it feels so comfortable. And uh, you do see some, uh, like in the Wallace collection and stuff. You do, can you let go of it? <laughs> let go of the tower. You do see some that have got really, really even more exaggerated tilts to the uh, pommel disc than this. So evidently, some people in India who were using tulwars liked, despite the fact that it was normal to have this disc pommel to kind of force you to to slice rather than uh, sort of chop from the wrist like that but instead to use the full arm and body movement some people nevertheless did like that to be tilted a little bit more presumably because they found it more comfortable to their hand or they wanted to be ex able to extend the blade out a little bit more comfortably but so yeah so that's it's a nice tulwar isn't it it's basically it's a great example of a basic fighting tulwar of the middle of the 19th century probably 
You really like okay, you can keep holding that. Let's open oh, I up. I thought you were saying you can keep that. <laughs> You've got too many swords already, Lucy. Lovely. Right. So here's something I suspect Lucy will have seen them before because they're not uncommon. And because my house is full of swords. But I suspect that she won't actually know what it is called or where it's ah! from. <laughs> so I'm right. Oh, motherfucker. So, There's so, a so you had oh, sorry. <laughs> so, so some of you will immediately know what this is. No, I can do it. Um, so this, there we go. Da, da, da. And let's take that out there. There we go. I didn't know So, so this is your chance to get in there before Lucy does. What is this called and where's it from? Approximately. You do find these in a few different countries. Uh, but it's from a general area. It is... Don't say it yet. When you get married, and once you've both done the I do, and it's, now you're officially married, and the, the priest or the, the vicar or whoever says, and now you can... You may... <laughs> okay, so now you may... to do with the word kiss. <laughs> so it's very close to that word. Oh! What's close to the word kiss? Just add one letter in somewhere. <laughs> no, I can't. Kish. 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 Sean Connery. Kish. <laughs> it's a Chris. Damn. Yes, yeah, so it's from... No, um, it. Yeah, that's, uh, they tend to be from places like Java, Malaysia, um, Indonesia. Uh, I did ha used to have a Chris. I had a wavy bladed one. So yeah. these these are. Oh, you're thinking of the big big ones. No, no, it was but, that size. Anyway, this this is a yeah, dagger yeah. size one, probably from Java, Indonesia, somewhere like that. So it's straight bladed. These. Uh, can you notice it has a lot of texture in the steel? And I believe that some of these are made of meteoric iron, um, and they are etched to bring out a pattern. Some of the pattern welded quite beautifully. Um, this one is. Um, does have a pattern in the blade, but it, uh, it's a bit corroded. And um, the scabbard's in nice condition, um, pretty cool thing um, with brass additions. Um, what you often find, so these the handles to these daggers are um, basically wedged in, in place, um, and um, I, I think that they're not even really glued. There's nothing, there's nothing, not, not an awful lot holding them in place. The tang goes up here inside the grip, the tang is usually a rod. And these are essentially kind of jammed on. Um, and uh, what you often find, therefore, is that sometimes these grips come loose. This one is actually secure, but the uh, kind of guard section, if we call it that, is uh, loose. And that is uh, very, very common, unfortunately. You can, of course, fix that if you want to. Um, but as I say, the, the grip itself is secure on this. And they are gripped like this. And they're an example of a, a, a thrusting knife or dagger which uh, has essentially a canted grip like we sometimes see on sabers uh, to to give a more efficient should we say or easy uh, thrust so they are pro primarily uh, thrusting weapons although if you look at uh, um, you know filipino and other southeast asian martial arts you do see these used for uh, cutting as well although not necessarily this particular type these were worn by all sorts of people um, in Indonesia and Java and places like that. Uh, they were uh, just, just the same as daggers are worn in Arabic and Persian culture. Um, the, these were worn very much um, as a typical part of culture in those countries. So these were very common bringbacks for anyone who went traveling in the 19th um, or even right the way into the middle of the 20th century, probably even still today, there's probably still making these. But this is clearly got some age to it. It's probably late 19th century, I'd say maybe early 20th. Right, let's have a look at the next object. Lucy's still holding the tolwa. Right, we haven't got that many things left now. Oh, there's something in here. Let's see what this might be. So, Chris. I won't remember, I don't think. <laughs> What do you think this might be? Cookery. You just think everything's a cookery? No, I just want everything to be a cookery. We haven't actually bought a cookery for quite a while, have we? I sold one sold recently. Most of my cookeries. What's that? Cookery! <laughs> <laughs> careful, careful. Stop, 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 stop. Always push to the back. There we go. 
Oh, it's a really nice small one. Right, a piece of health and safety advice. So, see, I was holding it right. You were, you were, you were. So, um, so a lot of people I see at antique fairs and um, military fairs and stuff like that, I see trying to get cookeries in and out of the sheaths uh, and doing it in an unsafe way. First of all, remember with a cookery, the edge is on the inside. So don't put your fingers or thumb around the edge like this when you're pulling it because of the shape of the blade. If anything goes wrong, that blade's going to be coming to your fingers. So first of all, hold the back like that. And that's number one. Secondly, when you're pulling it out or pushing it back in, which I'll show in a minute, push to the back. So push the back, blunt back of the blade to the back of the sheath and pull out whilst pushing against the back. That will keep the edge away from splitting the front of the scabbard and of course keep the little edge away from um, any fleshy parts as well. When you're putting it back in, a lot of people get the line wrong and it gets stuck and then they split the scabbard up here or hurt themselves. Just gently push the back of the blade towards the back of the hole in the scabbard until it goes in and follow the back around. Okay, let the back of the blade follow the back of the sheath. If it gets stuck at any point, okay, don't just try pushing harder, just wiggle it. Wiggle it until it starts moving again and then you can push and get the thing. So there you go. Safe, what I just did. Safe, yeah, so safe, you're aware safe cookery, extraction and, re right. and re-entry. Yes, this is really nice. It's just a little... It's um, a nice little it, cookery. It's a little kind of, um, I would call it kind of like villager standard cookery Minecraft villager. there's not it's not a military one it's nothing there's nothing fancy or special about it you might be wondering why the grip was white incidentally that is not ivory and um, because you can see little bone. you can yeah bone <laughs> brooklyn 99 reference there um you can see little black dots which are where the vein where the blood vessels ran through it if you can see blood vessel dots that is bone you don't get that in ivory um, and it's also got lines in it. You can just see that it's that it's bone. And if you look at the end, you can see more of the little blood vessels that you get in bone. Thanks. Good. Let's move on and look at the last few objects. Okay, so we're down to the last two objects. Let's do the let's do the big one first. Um, so this is jangly. Saber. Does look a bit like a saber, doesn't it? Don't say anything else for a minute. Let's. Uh... So the recesses of my brain remember that the size of this denotes where it's from. So like the bigger is the bigger width there, like German, and the smaller ones British. Or something like that. A bit, yeah. So you're talking about the difference between. Uh, yes, but let's talk about that in a second. So fundamentally, what does this look like? I expect a lot of you out there will know what that is. It is a Same. 1796 light cavalry sabre, yes. Um, and um, this is a, a British one. Um, but what Lucy was talking about was the German Blucher, uh, the model 1811, which was based on the British 1796, because the nation of shopkeepers that Britain was sold lots of 1796s or provided lots to the German states to fight Napoleon. And I think they passed into German use and were copied and became the German Blucher. Um, this has had a replacement grip covering on it. Okay, so that is, it's probably the original wood, but it's not the original covering it's to it. Terribly which is fine. Um, 1796s are getting hard to get hold of, and it's nice that you've got the scabbard as well. A lot of them are missing their scabbards. Just trying to look and see if there's any. I don't think there's any maker's name or marks on the scabbard that I've seen so far, but there is nicely on the back of the blade there. So can you see what that says? Don't worry if you can't. It looks like Kenneth, which I'm pretty It looks like Kenneth, but it's actually Kenneth. Runkle. Okay, <laughs> not, not very similar to Kenneth, but Runkle was... So it says, nice. what that says yeah. is Runkle Solingen. Okay, so yeah. Runkle okay. was a, a German guy, basically, uh, who moved to Britain during the Napoleonic Wars, and his family were sword makers and blade makers, and the cat is climbing inside is one of the postal the tubes. Um, let's, let's, oh no, let's see if he wants to be on camera because I know you guys like to see him. There we go, Oscar cat. <laughs> Very tolerant cat. Um, and uh, Runkle essentially imported huge numbers of blades, thousands and thousands of blades. 
uh, and complete swords probably as well to Britain during the Napoleonic period. But they were being, we th well, they were being, the blades were being made in Solingen and then for the most part imported to Britain where they were possibly then hilted in many cases by other people. And then they were being provided to the government. This has got a government inspection mark on it. See there, it's a crown with a uh -huh. number one underneath it, which is, I think, Birmingham inspection. So this has been passed into military. So this was carried almost certainly during the Napoleonic Wars um, and uh, issued by the British military. But the blade was made in Solingen in Germany. So there we go. So 1796 light cavalry saber with a scabbard. And a, and a recovered grip. Not badly done. Not, um, not badly done, but it, it's not original. So full disclosure. And of course, in my day job as an antique dealer on Eastern Antique Arms, um, where some of these things will be for sale, perhaps most of them, um, I would, of course, uh, describe any imperfections and uh, disclose any things like that, anything that's not original. Uh, anything that I can say about... Um, the things that I'm selling, I try to, um, so that obviously customers are fully aware of what they're buying. Right, the final object. I think this one is going to stump Lucy it's again. Chris. Wow, look at she learns. <laughs> so let's see. But is it another Chris? Well, what? it's got the that thing bit. It's got the stuff. So Pull there we go. It's somewhat bigger, isn't it? Pull it out. Pull it out, right? Uh, oh, careful of my fingers. Da, 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 da. Uh, it's like the wiggly one. There we go. It's bigger and it's wiggly. There we go. It is. It is a Chris, but this is a Moro. So what's going on here? Oh well, I'll talk about that in a second. It is a Moro Chris from the Philippines. This type and this type was used more like a sword as a chopping and stabbing weapon, um, used more kind of how you'd imagine a, a sword being used. These are still used in Filipino martial arts today, um, and they're still being made. In fact, you can buy modern made ones. Um, and you can see that compared to the probably Javanese or Malaysian, Indonesian type, it is just a bigger object. It's just a bigger uh, weapon. And, uh, and it's a cut and thrust weapon rather than just... In terms of the wavy blade versus the straight blade, you can get straight blade versions of these without the waves, and you can get wavy blade versions of those. So you find wavy blades in the region. Um, what do you prefer? I like the wavy blades because it's exotic. Um, um, you know, most other European swords, for example, have straight blades, or you do get some wavy blades. But yeah, I like the wavy blades. Very difficult to make, quite difficult to sharpen, but you can do some quite savage things with them. Uh, draw cuts and push cuts that are much more effective with these uh, wiggly blades. So what is that bit? <clears throat> Pardon? Why is that? Ah, right. So what Lucy's asking about is this... Um, in fact, I think you can see it because it's shining, uh, this brass bit here. So as I mentioned, these hilts are essentially um, by friction held onto the tang. I don't really know if they're glued on. You know, I f hands up admit, I don't really know if they use a glue material. I suspect they probably do, um, or at least do some of the time. But this handle, because it's glued onto the tang, there's not an awful lot holding it on. Now, bear in mind, this is a bigger weapon that you're going to be chopping with and other, using a shield with, and the opponents will have shields and block with that shield. So this is going to be a bit more rough and tumble of a weapon than the other one. So you need an additional secure point between that and that. So what they did is this part round here has a connecting point to this band which goes around the blade. So really it's a reinforcement to attach, attach the, make sure the blade stays married to the grip when you're swinging it around, basically, make it stronger. There's one other nice thing to mention about these. They, people talk about the blades being uh, poisoned and, and uh, quenched in uh, all sorts of exotic materials to make them more lethal. There's a lot of um, uh, kind of um, uh, superstition and there's a lot of religious belief and um, kind of, not alchemy, I can't think what the right word is, Bullshit. Uh, <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of tradition around um, trying to make weapons more potent, wearing of amulets and stuff like this. And even today in the Philippines, that's something that's uh, carried on. Um, and um, yet yeah, one thing I was going to mention as well about the design of this weapon that's quite interesting is you'll notice these little teeth up here at the back. And I believe that those are essentially, as well as being decorative, 
they also are good for catching and binding against opponents weapons um, so it's kind of protects the line up towards the back of your wrist and hand and arm and so you can catch things in there uh, sometimes in defensive uh, techniques that's the theory I uh, don't know how uh, true that is but that's what I've been told anyway there we go we've done the full bunch of weapons unless I've missed some I think that was the full um, that was the full inventory as it were I hope you've enjoyed watching thank you to Lucy for being part of this video you're welcome I thank knew... you for having me <laughs> I knew that this was going to be a long and involved video and it really helped uh, having Lucy uh, here, <laughs> here to I don't... thank you <laughs> you're good Lucy was very was very useful as were you guys, thank you for your contribution uh, and doing the guessing. Let me know how many of them you guessed or let me know if any of them you didn't have a clue what they were. And in fact, at least a couple of these, I don't really have a clue what they are. I have a rough idea, but I don't necessarily know exactly what they are. Um, so anything here that you uh, could add to, uh, any things that you think people should know about these objects that I didn't mention, feel free to comment underneath. Give me a uh, like and a subscribe, please. Hopefully we'll see Lucy in the, the, the future uh, with less of an interval than uh, previously. And, this um, time next year. This time next year for the Christmas video. Christmas video. No. Uh, and yeah, we, we'll see you soon uh, for the next video on Scholar Gladiatorial Channel. Subscribe if you haven't done, please. Click that notification bell. Give me a like and share it with all your friends. Extra videos on Patreon uh, if you want them. And otherwise, I'll see you back here for another video really soon. Bye. Cheers, folks.